Hi guys, my name's Seb Tudor, I'm the man on the Silver Mountain, and welcome back to Torment Tides of Numenera. Now, we left on a bit of a longer video last time, a little bit of a cliffhanger, and uh, I clicked on just a little bit. Once we jumped through, the Sorrow tried to grab us, and then the portal closed and it couldn't get us, and now there's this sound. So a terrible sound fills your ears, a chittering, whispering cacophony. Something probes at the edges of your mind, something vast and incomprehensible. Concentration, resist with all your might. Ah, uh, some of our might. The might that doesn't actually cost us anything. You breathe deeply, channeling your instinctive fear into cold fury. Then you focus that fury against the thing that is probing your mind. At once, the chittering sound ceases, and you sense the vast presence regarding you more carefully, perhaps even respectfully. A new sound replaces the chittering, a bone-jarring hum, like the buzzing of insect wings the size of mountains. It grows stronger and louder. The sound becomes a dull ache that spreads through your body. The ache becomes pain, hot and searing. You grind your teeth, straining uh, to concentrate to keep the intruder out of your mind. Then, without warning, it stops. You feel the sudden sense of recognition, perhaps surprise. The chittering fades and you slowly wake. Yep, we're, we're somewhere gooey. Which I think may very well be the bloom. Dracogen. What is this? What new treasure is here for me to find? Friendly voice booms. Opening your bleary eyes, you see an earnest, grey-skinned, non-human with a toothy smile. He is tall and wide across the shoulders and exudes great strength. His hands terminate in long claws. That tattoo. So another of the changing gods' children has made his way here. It's been a long time. But where are my manners? My name is Dracogen, and you are in the bloom. Though I dare say uh, you didn't expect to arrive here quite like this. Perception. His voice is warm and welcoming, but there is something else in his tone that suggests something more predatory. Uh, his cast-offs always find the most exciting curios for me. Do you have questions? Perhaps I can answer them for you. Um... I felt others pulled in. Where are they? Who knows? The Bloom's motivations are inscrutable, and its tendrils pass through countless worlds and dimensions. If you, f uh, if you were brought here by the Bloom itself, then these others you speak of could literally be anywhere. Okay. How did I get here? All I did was touch the ferretry. You don't remember? A pity. It must have been something you to experience. If you'd come down uh, from the Memovira's fortress or along one of the roadways, you'd know the path you took. The pathways of the bloom are strange, and not all of its roads are pleasant. What were those voices? The bloom is a living creature, with a reach across dimensions. There are several creatures like that in uh, the Numenera setting, and they're really, really interesting. Um, its consciousness, if it may use that, if I may use that term, is unlike anything we know, so unless I miss my guess, what you heard was some of the many voices of the blue. Okay, so what do you want from me? A business proposition, my friend. I wish to prove my value to you, and then you can provide value in return. I trade in information, favours, and Numenera, and it so happens I know about you and your kind. You're a cast-off of the Changing God, an old acquaintance of mine. Indeed, I have known a number of your brethren. I even know about Miela Vest. Um, your secret refuge. So ask. Ask, and I will do what I can to provide an answer. Miela Vest was destroyed by the sorrow. Shock flashes across his features, and uh, he wipes it clear quickly. I am truly sorry to hear that. I never had the honour of a visit, though I longed to go. Such accumulated knowledge, so many artefacts lost, the value of the pieces would have been well, worth well, no matter, no matter what's done is done. That is valuable information. I need to think on how best to leverage it. What do you know about cast-offs? Uh, I have met your sire. I know that he makes and discards you. I know that the sorrow pursues the changing god and destroys his cast-offs as a con consequence. I know more about... Uh, but my trade is information. We'll speak more of what I know later, perhaps. I know you are hunted, but what might be considered a natural enemy of the 
oh, by what might be considered a natural enemy of the bloom. Um, <clears throat> most cast-offs prefer not to come to the bloom. It is, a it is a great predator, you know, and something about the psychic energies of your kind seems to have great appeal to it. Perhaps some residue of your sire's life. He gives Matt Kena a slight icon uh, ironic bow. Matt Kena is an exception, of course, for she has had some extensive experience here. Milady, I have not seen your face in some time. Dracogen, I'm surprised you're still here. What did he uh, give the Memovira that she allowed him to stay? The bloom brings me many things, and I find that no matter what, uh, no matter who rules, the flow of information in Numenera never changes. But let's let us continue. Okay, I'm here looking for the first cast off. She has been dead for over a century. You, uh, have you tried her tomb? Fine. If I were looking for a random cast off in the bloom, where would I start? Very good, very good indeed. You declare one thing, I declare another, and so you find a way to sidestep my denial. I concede. In the face of your uh, surety that my information may be incorrect, I do not have your answer, but I know one who might. Very confident in his information. How intriguing. If you wanted to know anything about the Bloom, you should speak to its ruler, the Memovira. Anyone can claim that title. Question is how well she holds it. Well enough so far. Okay. Alright, where can I find her? Why not? Inside her fortress, but she has locked her gates to outsiders while she considers the problems that face her. Only those who can provide something of value to get to her get in, like me. I see. So what do you want in exchange for an introduction? I once had claim... Uh, to an artifact, but it was spirited away to a place called the Ascension of Kex Leonish, Leonish, Realm of Crystalline Beauty. I need that artifact back. It's called the Magmatic Annulet. A uh, circlet of dark Hyalian material. Okay. Or Hyaline, either way. Uh, it is of great interest to me, great interest. I believe that you may be uniquely suited to retrieve it. Find it, bring it to me, and I guarantee you an audience with the Memovira. Okay, how do I get there? Follow the caravan road to the trade post. You'll find the moor there, and it will take you to the Ascension. Or rather, it did, but that's why I'm sending you, cast off. Your kind always finds a way towards your starter's footsteps. What's a moor? A moor is one of the many mouths of the bloom, reaching its tendrils through the dimensions. Some enterprising individuals travel these tendrils, exploring new worlds and bringing back strange and wondrous items to trade. Okay, fair Making enough. I hoped you might. Oh, before we part, you have the scent of an old friend on you, Tibir. Uh, if you uh, should happen to come across him again, tell... Uh, please tell him that I would love to see him again. He and I have matters to discuss. I'll remember that. Okay. Refugees, strange shadows attacking a person. More importantly, we have level ups to do, which we've been unable to do for a while now. Okay, so we've one point. When you kill an enemy, immediately make a bonus attack against the nearest enemy in range. Brawler, ignore the flanked fettle. That's a good one. Boost your heavy weapons? Yeah, why not? Um, we'll up your stat points again for now. Cool. Matkina, you're going to want she's a stealthy, sneaky type and we need don't need that much more XP to to hit the next thing that we need again you know, you should settle down. apparently we need to talk mm. you could even raise a barn or two 
Maybe next to a babbling brook. I've already heard enough. Okay, hold on. Let's talk to... Uh, it's you. Can I ask you something? If you didn't know better, you'd think he looked thoughtful. He rubs the side of his face and then the corner of his sleep-bruised eyes. I've been pondering some of the th uh, things some things for over an hour about what happened back there in Miela Vest. All those people with stories so like your own, and now so many of them have just stopped, and I barely knew them at all. How? How are they supposed to be part of my story if they're dead? We don't like this thought. Suffuse him. Blind him. Yes. Talk about them like they didn't exist before you came along. They were my brothers and sisters, and now they're gone. It's not really about you. You aren't part of your story. Most of them were born long before any of us. There you go. It's not. I don't understand. Unless I'm supposed to avenge them for my for my loyal friend. That's you, of course. There. Their stories are over now, aren't they? I mean, unless they come back at some dramatic moment more powerful than they were before. I love doing that. He is still talking. We are filling his eyes and thoughts, and he is still talking. But assuming that doesn't happen, what does it mean? Their stories matter uh, to them, I think. But what do they matter now? Um... Yeah, I think I think that's that's fair to say. Larger story. I've always lived life, uh, to the, uh, lived life to the next adventure, but now I'm wondering where it will all end. What will it be like? What will happen after? You will inspire others to follow your example, to host us, to entertain us. Well, that's just a little creepy, don't you think? Okay, so what have we got here? We've got. Refugees, broken spaceship, maybe? Oh, slaves, exiles, our, our, our main man over here. This person has a name. Let's go and see what's happening over here. Here, yeah, take the money. Okay, bye. Um, a woman barefoot and in rags stands defensively beside her tent. Despite her obvious poverty, she crosses her arm and holds her chin high. And what do you want? Another dangerous looking one. Gods, is there no end of predators in this place? Um, who are the people who ran off? They're called Delny and Vrung. They've been squeezing money out of me for months. Protection, they call it. Though obviously they only mean for them. from them. I wish I could do... Uh, more than simply cave to their demands, but as you can see, I'm not exactly equipped to defend myself. It's all I can do to survive. Maybe I can help. Where do they go? They crawl out of a hole somewhere deeper in the bloom. Little Nilish? Niliesh. Meh. Um, I think it's called. I'm not the sort to wish violence up upon anyone, even people like them, but I hope something happens to stop them. I'm so naive, hoping for help. Still, no harm in pointing one potential thug to another. Okay. Ah. People. It's another uh, Philippus. Lethus, yes. Seems remarkably similar to the one you met in Sega's Cliffs. Perception. Indeed, it is identical to the one in every uh, in every respect. If it notices your presence, it gives no sign. Instead, it watches the slave market with the scholars. Avid disinterest. Why did the child wail? That's just what children do. They cry. Um... <laughs> for a span, stand still and silent. 
and then with a gasp like the opening of an old vault it sighs ah after a moment it seems to nod slightly as if inviting you to pose questions of your own I've seen you before haven't I the hall was dark and the plasma gleamed together we posed questions looking for someone a fellow cast off the changing god Okay, fair enough. You know anything about the bloom? Socket, a doorknob. Crumbling cliff, these are not your face. Each that is, is itself. The mirror does not look back. The bloom cannot teach, but it leaves scraps. One gathers. Okay. Is there anything I can help you with? Gives no answer, not even one of buried sounds of its contemplation. Eventually, it comes clear that nothing will come. I said, can I help you? <sighs> okay. Well, you've got a name. But nothing to say, apparently. Who's Parsim Flint? apart from possibly a slave trader. Fat little man turns towards you. Wide smile appears already on his face. Indeed, his smile is unnaturally wide, reaching almost to his ears. You notice that his mouth contains two rows of white, well-manicured teeth. You catch me in the midst of an auction, sir, but no need to beg pardon. My clients will wait. Um, he leans forward conspiratorially. I find that a short delay in the proceedings gets them talking amongst themselves and sparks their competitive nature. Good for prices. The smile gets even wider, if that's possible. Parson Flint is my name. And the disbursement of so-called slaves to so-called owners for the betterment of both parties is my trade. What sort of slave are you looking for? Um, he... Uh, Calistee, she leans into you. These slaves are lucky, frankly. Consignments of the condemned have been known to go missing, usually when vivisectionists are flush with shins and require more advanced subjects. This is practically humane. Why would I want a slave? To feed moors, of course, unless you're planning to let them feed on you, but I wouldn't advise this. Fresh to the bloom, this one. He's not a licensed buyer, for sure, then. Naturally, it helps to know what a moor wants before you uh, go buying a slave. Not much point in buying a slave who isn't appetizing to the moor in question. You'd be surprised how many people make that mistake. Still, you never know. Maybe he would be interested in the boy. So, shall we conduct business? No. <laughs> um, Bloom Dweller. Uh, guess. Hold on. Bruska. Why does that name ring a bell? This woman's face. There's two missing. This woman's face is lined with worry, though her thick build suggests that she could snap a spear in two without much effort. She continually uh, glances towards the tunnel out of the courtyard as though she hopes to see somebody. She runs a hand through her short grey hair and mutters, Gods, two missing. Okay. What are you looking at? Nobody gets in the fortress without permission. I can already tell you don't have it, so keep walking. Strong. Is that obvious? You'd be worried too if you had two patrols go missing and you were stuck on guard duty. Making a note. Listen, if you happen, happen to see my missing soldiers, I'd appreciate whatever news you can give me. They'll be outfitted like me. I'd go looking myself, but... She gives a kind of surrendered shrug, leaving her thought unfinished. Uh, where should I start I looking for that. your missing patrols? Both, with, uh, both of the patrols were tasked tasked with collecting uh, duties from the gangs. 
they're probably somewhere in the vast interior or one of the slums, but I haven't heard from them in some time. Given the nature of the bloom, they could literally be anywhere. If I find your missing patrol, will you let me inside? I don't decide who gets in, just keep everyone else out. But if you find my men, I'll give you something for your trouble. Okay. for prey. Well, he seems happy. Skady and anine. So that's what an anine looks like. I don't actually think there are any um, pictures in the books of them. I could be wrong, but... Is he going to try and kill me? Metal's construct stands before you, silent and still. Its armoured, uh, its armour, is pitted and ancient, spiked with metal thorns. Instead of arms, the construct has long killing blades sharpened to a gleaming edge. What are you doing? I wouldn't talk to this monster. I've seen it kill someone, power, uh, some powerful people, and some powerful not people too. I don't like the way it looks at me either. You sense a mind inside the machine. It is a mind so alien that although you can hear it, you cannot understand its thoughts. Who are you? Construct stirs. The voice emanates from somewhere in its depths. It has a hollow, empty sound, as if it speaks from a vast cavern underground. I am a soldier, a predator. My names are as numerous as the wars in which I have fought. But those wars are finished now, and I have left my names behind. Surely you remember some. I remember all my names. Exonarch Series 14. Genshero Mark 10. When I was a bodyguard to Vostula Lo, he called me his barber of flesh and made, uh, made of me a bogeyman. Feared and hated every nation he conquered contract says nothing after that but hisses and words inside its armor okay who created you i do not know nor have i ever known they culled all records of themselves from our mem from our minds i only remember those who for whom i fought and there have been many such masters over many long millennia of service for a time i believe my siblings and i slept I do not know for how long. Then we were awakened by new masters, the Tabat. We fought for them until they were no more. Do you remember about the Tabat? Much. They ruled this land as warlords before the building of Sager's Cliffs. They were slaves uh, to an edifice known as the Underspine. Yet they were its masters as well. I do not know where they came from or who they were before they rose to power, for those things happened before they awakened me. I remember this too. They held single combat as the highest virtue, revealing the quality of one's soul. They believed that we had powerful souls, my siblings and I, for none of them could defeat us alone. They fought on two-legged beasts, brandishing weapons from another of another age, unearthed uh, from great hordes beneath the ground, that is also where they found me and my siblings. They awakened us, spoke the proper words, and we killed on their command. Okay. Fair enough. Let's go and talk to this person over here, who looks like a traitor. Uh, a pale, heavy-set merchant woman. <clears throat> Excuse me stands by an agitated Anine. Her eyes seem to have trouble focusing on you, and when they do, she drops them, her hands nervously adjusting the scarf around her neck. Need help, can't think, I must... Okay. I'm Skady. Here to trade. Why are you wearing that heavy scarf? 
Um, her eyes meet yours, and for a moment you almost think there's a pleading quality to them. Then they blaze with fury. That's none of your business. Leave it be or just leave. Perception. As she speaks, she fed fiddles with the scarf again. You notice splotches of blood on it. Scarf. I forgot I put it on to hide. Nothing. It hides nothing. You have a little, uh, little uh, something on your on your scarf there. I do. Where the woman pulls the scarf from her neck to look at it, revealing jagged, still bleeding teeth marks on her throat. Dirty trickster. Go try your games on someone else. Please, just leave us alone. Just leave us alone. I told you to leave. I'm not selling you any. Okay. Well, I messed that up because Seb was too curious. Oh well, such is life. Touch the anine. Go. Examine the anine. Look, the beast has blood in its mouth, and its mistress has blood on her neck. That means... Foul need feeding on your mistress like some feeding thing. I'll handle this. Eretus... Wait, Eretus punching? <laughs> oh, I so want to let him punch it. Might not be the best option. Punching is always the best option, unless you, have a, unless you can skewer. Skewering is even better, but please. Tell me... Uh, your other exciting options. Ask the owner what's wrong with it. Fine, if you want to do the boring thing. <laughs> yes, I want to do the boring thing. Swallows hard at glance. Okay. I can help. Just tell me what's happening to you. My anine, it, it feeds on me. Suckles the blood from my neck. For some reason, I can't... No, I don't want to make it stop. But that's a lie. I do want it to stop. I think the bloom did this to my anine and to me, tied us together somehow. It's in our heads. I can hear it whispering to me. Um, we we can we can help. We're we're good at this stuff with the mental and the psychics and so on. I did it. The voices are gone. Neen also shakes its head, snorts, and settles back on its haunches. Thank you. I don't know what was wrong with me. The bloom got in my head and changed my anine too. But I think uh, she's back to her old self now. You can come back any time. I'll give you a discount. It's the least I can do. Awesome. Do you have any... Uh, <laughs> do you have any armor? No, but you do have weapons. And this weapon is quite frankly rubbish. So you can have that. Um, what's this? We need a, a light melee weapon or heavy crossbow.
We'll, we'll go for a, a buzzer instead. See if that makes any any difference relative to the to that. Or will we? Yeah, we'll go with that for now. I mean, I know it. Admire you, dear. Such single-mindedness. You could be a great scholar, you know. Is that your idea of a compliment? If that's how you want to take it, then yes. Okay, so looks like this is our allow me our way onwards. Please don't kill me as I walk past. Thank you. Okay, let's hop out here then. In fact, I should probably probably save as well. After that, uh, that stuff with the anine. So that was the sorrow in its full power, cast off. What else have you been hiding from me? Um. Then I don't want that. None of us do. Um. How can I stay with you? How can you ask this of me? Knowledge. That's why I started this path. Is it still enough? So I like you, Calistige. Please don't. Please don't leave. We can solve this together. There you go. What possible solution could there be? And what madness is it that I cannot bring myself to refuse you, for good or ill? Yeah. Let's keep Calistige around because. We like her. Uh, there we go. Cool. Right, how long have we been going? Do you know what? Because the last one was a little longer, I think I'm going to cut this one a little short and leave it here for now and we can continue uh, next time. So, thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the video tomorrow. Take care. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, then please drop us a like and subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the video tomorrow. Take care.